welcome back to a new episode here in Suave in today's episode of the logo animation series I'm gonna show you how we made this logo the ascent fit logo and as all as always don't forget to check out our demo pack of the transitions that we're working on hopefully it will be out soon before this month and hopefully fingers crossed Hopefully I'm able to make everything because I want to add some free titles and free sound effects that I have to create. So I've been trying to learn a lot about sound design production. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. Anyways, so this title has a couple of parts. It's basically most of it done in 3D. And let me show you. The first part that we did was... Whoop, where is this? There. Is this polygon line which is the the line that you've seen animating around things then the next part was these 3d shapes that I just added around then this one was the background and this other one was the background too so that both of them so that the camera was starting in a black uh, like in a dark spot and then showing up on this gradient background right here and then the, the the other part is the ascent fit logo and if you need to train or work out don't forget to check their instagram page i'm gonna try to link it down below and whatever um so then you can get some workouts and get super fit um yeah so all right let's get started right away so for this polygon thing polygon part the first thing that I did, I'm going to create the other lines right here in the side so we can see it. So, and then, yeah, so we're going to create a background first of all. And we're going to make it red. The actual background of this is gradient actually. So let's just do it that way also. And then you can also shape the gradient in a way that goes like that. And you can add different colors here. So let's just add a color for this one. The dark one is going to be black. The one in the middle is going to be red just for the example and this one was going to be white. Yeah. So then on this background what we did was I just added a polygon here and on the polygon you simply want to draw and hold it and add it so that you add the curves. And I'm just trying to do it pretty raw right here, not too many details. And then at the end I just added that staircase type of thing. No, so I basically took inspiration on. I actually saw another Ascent Fit page, and it was about like obstacle racing or something. Um, and yeah, so then I took that obstacles and then climbing because that's what goes in that type of training, at least in that other one. But yeah, then I realized it was a different Ascent Fit, but that's fine. Um, yeah, and then after you got that, you want to play with the border width gonna be like that and then as the previous video this episode number two have you seen we use the length to animate this this one is a little bit too fat but like that too thick but it doesn't matter because this is just raw and showing you how it was made yeah so then the animation for this was basically um, the polygon the length let's just animate it right away so we don't forget later so we're gonna animate it from zero all the way to let's say 30 so it's gonna be like a little bit over a second because this is at 24 frames per second timeline and then to make these be able to be seen on 3d what we do is we go here and add an image plane so then we're able to see this on a 3d space right and then after we got that that's pretty much it for that section the next section is we're gonna add an merge node and connect that here well, it has to be a 3D merge, I forgot, sorry. There. Um, oops, here. So we can keep seeing everything that we have. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna create right now, it's gonna be the backgrounds that we have. And for that, it's actually really simple. You're gonna do the same thing like that we did here, the image plane and the background, and the background node. So we're gonna add the backgrounds here. And they were two, so we're just going to do two at the same time right here. So the first one is going to be the bigger one. And we're going to connect it here. And this one was going to be the gradient one. So it's going to be a radial gradient. 
gonna just start dark Oop, right here this one's gonna be dark this one is gonna have a the, the greenish color and this one can be white and you can also adjust the opacity of it too and all that stuff right there so then we can press here one to see this merge node whoops press the wrong one there and we're good we can adjust this one and we can change the place where the actual gradient starts by moving this like that and then it started right in the side I think and then I think there's a way to make it bigger too um yeah if you slide this the darker part is gonna make it gonna become bigger like that and then we go to the image plane and move it backwards a little bit to make it bigger going here and using the scale option and it was not that bigger than the one that we did but yeah and then we move a little bit to the side because in this one it ends outside of the screen um yeah and then after we have that one we're gonna start um let's see we don't actually need this other black background if we have a black portion right here the only reason why we had this one is because when i show it to um i don't want to say client the person that i was making this for uh, they talked about they wanted to start from black from all dark so that's what we did that a quick fix instead of having to change all the gradient map and all that stuff all right anyways so then after we got that the next thing that we can do is we can put the shapes right away and i'm gonna go quickly through these because that's basically just using this 3d shape node and then you can select different type of shapes here and i made an actual section here with them and i just merged them all in this one merger and we can see it on screen right now you can make it smaller also and then you can copy and paste it so we have more and then we can change the shapes here to like a sphere um yeah and you get the idea basically i'm um, gonna connect this merge node to this one so when we see everything then we can position these other 3d shapes that we have um wherever we want to put them in right so this one is here and then you can play around play around with the lighting and other options here uh but i i don't think i did that with this um project i just had a simple light com coming from one side and then doing that so we're gonna just leave it at two shapes for this time um so it's still gonna do sort of like similar thing going around them right yeah and then we can actually let's just add a little bit of length to this one that we have here whoops if you try to do it in 3d it's not gonna work so you make sure you're using uh you're in a 2d space when you're editing your polygon because otherwise it's not gonna work there and we're gonna keep this one on screen always so we can remember what we did right so then what we have here the last th the next thing that we did was i added the actual logo so let me just go here and get the logo right here and then the same thing we do to be able to put a 2d image into a 3d setting you want to use the image plane always and then we're going to connect it to this merge node 3d merge nodes you can pretty much put as many 3d nodes connected to that one there and at first my camera movement was pretty crazy but then i decided to just do it sort of like vertical alineation i don't know if that's a natural word but yeah i just wanted to make it align so that they are both vertically so then it's easier for the actual camera movement and all that stuff right and then after we have that the next thing that we can do is Oh, I forgot to mention there is an actual tutorial of the motion path this is sort of like a motion path animation that I have and it's a more in-depth tutorial on how to play around with this effect and have pretty cool motion graphics um, to do pretty cool motion graphics oh error I forgot to I'm working on a 1920 by 
um, 1080 on my laptop right now and that will make it go crazy sometimes so yeah let me just pause it for a second okay yeah, let's get back into it um so yeah so after it crash don't forget to work with proxies if you are working with a lot of graphics and 3d and all that stuff yeah i forgot about that earlier and since everything of these was activated sometimes my computer goes crazy um yeah so anyways yeah so i yeah i forgot to save earlier early so i had to redo everything so it's not going to be the same as a little bit earlier so sort of similar but yeah we were at this portion right here this section so what we did in that one was right when the thing started here the text also is going to get revealed right and for that we're going to ask add a mask Whoop. to here we're not going to be able to see it here because so we're going to change here to portion one oops right here and then we can adjust this mask right here to fit that side and what i did was um i added a sort of like a mask reveal so and i think what it was actually was that um let me see yeah so the thing was showing up right here so what we're gonna do is right here 30 is when the thing gets here right so we're gonna start that animation here at 30 so the camera should also be there so we're gonna start at 30 and we're gonna animate the position of our mask then go like 45 maybe 15 frames a couple and then it's gonna reveal the whole text uh, there make sure everything is in I think so yeah and then at the same time when this happens we're gonna re retract this little mask right here right the polygon so right here at 30 at 40 we're gonna say we're gonna decrease the length so the ending screen is not showing with this line right okay we have everything pretty much there like that that then the next step is to add a camera and right here we have our camera and as I always like to say, I always like to start at the end, right? But it doesn't have to. So in this occasion, we're gonna start right at the beginning and we're gonna go here. And to be able to work well, you can press one here on the camera, um, not here. We're gonna add a render node so we can see what the camera is seeing there. So we can move this camera around and that's where the little dot starts right so this is a pretty raw version so don't worry too much about it uh, we can fix stuff later on but this is just so you know how to do it right okay so we're gonna start a camera movement at the same time right here and we're gonna animate all of these keyframes we're gonna go to 25 and we're gonna just try to get the camera diagonally to move and follow our line here at 25 actually 30 so we're gonna have to take this keyframe out oops there we're gonna go to 30 and we're gonna see where the line ends and try to align it to be right in the middle so a little bit higher and then at 30 it's 45 so at 45 the whole thing goes like that so the whole text reveals and then at 55 we're gonna bring our camera back in a little bit like that so the ascent fit logo ends in the middle of the screen right like that and since we have this background right here moving we can also animate this mac background by moving this image plane so right when the thing starts here maybe um 
like that. And this is a pretty raw version, just understand that, because I cannot, I spent a couple of hours on this one, so yeah. Uh, so we can animate this image plane right here to get it out of the way. So we're gonna animate the X, which is the horizontal one, and we're gonna animate it right away. So it gets out of our way. Like that. And that's pretty much it. So then, if you wanted to be able to see the 3D shapes, one last thing that you need is, you gotta make sure that your render here has the enable lighting and shadows. And you're not gonna see anything right now because there's no lights in this scene. So for that, we're gonna go here and we're gonna add, um, I didn't add a spotlight. I actually added a light that it was a directional light. And it's a little bit stronger. Oops, I just want this light. Where is it? This direction of light. And it's a little bit stronger. So it's a little bit too bright. Um, so we can decrease the intensity right here of the whole scene and not have to worry about that. And if you don't want this ascent fit to be affected by this 3D, you just go here and you go to um, light in and you say affected by light. Nope. So then it's gonna show up completely and you don't have to worry about having another set of lights there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We can adjust this a little bit more. You can also change the color of the light if you want. And yeah, so yeah, that's basically how I did the Ascent Fit logo right here. So hopefully you liked it. It's a little bit of a tarantula type of thing. It's a little complicated and looks messy, but you get the idea step by step. It's not that complicated once you are able to figure out a couple of things. And yeah, don't forget to check out the um motion paths video that i have so you can see exactly uh, how this whole thing works and how to track the camera so that it moves at the same time you can also add this spline and make everything smooth and also add motion blurs and all that but i'm gonna let you try it out and experiment it yourself um so yeah that's pretty much it hope you like this video and if you did, don't forget to leave a like. That helps a lot with the algorithm so more people can see these videos and we can grow together. And yeah, let us know in the comments what your thoughts are, what you want to know, any questions that you have or anything at all. Oh, yeah. So I hope to see you in the next video of the logo animation series in which we animate your logos using DaVinci Resolve 16. And the next episode will be up on probably Thursday so I'm doing this every other day so yeah uh, don't forget to check that one out and don't forget to check out the previous episodes if you haven't done so yet I hope to see you in the next video here in Suave